Hello everyone, this is Professor Hill, and this is a short video for our class, Introduction to Ethics, Philosophy 2306, here at St. Philip's College. This is the online version for the fall 2018 semester, and today we're talking, today, Wednesday, September the 5th, 2018, we're talking about chapter one in our book, Doing Ethics by Louis Vaughn. This is the beginning of week two. Last week we did introductions and started talking about getting the textbook, how to get it. Now we're reading chapter one and looking ahead to our first case study, which will be coming up. And that's going to be a difficult case study. There's some people that have already started to respond to it. And there are a lot of factors at play, but it's a terrible, difficult decision. This is the story of Jenny Lake and an ethical dilemma that she faced. True story, and it's powerful, and it ends badly. Let me just warn you now, there's no getting out of it. It's a terrible, difficult case. And the reason we look at it, though, is it forces us to look at some of the key concepts in terms of ethics, the philosophical study of morality, morality, our views about right and wrong, good and bad. And this case study makes us look at that. Why do we think something is good or bad, right or wrong? What's that based on? Now, in our textbook, in chapter one, Louis Vaughn breaks out four different types of ethics that he identifies. We looked at descriptive ethics already and compared how morality varies from country to country and society to society. We looked at the Pew Charitable Trust survey, 40,000 people in 40 different countries, and saw how extraordinarily different people's beliefs can be. Um, based on their culture. Now, we're bringing that into uh, our own examination of the Jenny Lake case, but I want us to also walk through the other types of ethics that he, he, he looks at and establishes in chapter one, he identifies normative ethics as the study of the beliefs, the rules, the principles, the core concepts. This is the what. If if the Pew Charitable Trust was doing a survey, doing descriptive ethics in terms of describing what these different people believe, the norms are what they actually believe. Now, to say something's a norm, though, in a society is not to say that there's complete uniformity about this, that it's somehow within a culture uniformly believed. That's just really not the case. Sometimes there's large and even influential minorities, but they would still be a minority view and that there is a dominant view in, say, a country or a culture. So there's going to be, a, and again, when we talk about that norm, it's, it's not even just that there's a standard that's right and the minority is wrong. We just need to understand from the descriptive ethic point of view that the norm is the, the most held beliefs in a society, even if there are significant minorities. He also talks um, about practical and professional ethics. This is kind of a small subcategory, and he says it refers to things like medical and legal ethics. And that's true. This is where in a profession, people have decided that the best practice of that profession, like law or medicine, is going to have a set of rules that apply to practitioners while they're practicing medicine or law, or whatever it happens to be. And typically, these are put forward by the profession, by the state organization, the association, and they can govern the licensing by the state of those individuals to practice. And so again, regardless of what it is, there might be rules which are unique to practitioners in the course of their work. So they might not apply outside of their work. They're only going to apply to people in the profession and license. And you'll see this because that's in part the hook. These aren't laws where if you violate them, you're going to get arrested by a police officer and put into a criminal justice system and, you know, potentially put into a jail that's run by the state. That, that's, this is a separate system. But the power that they have, though, is to discipline you. They could reprimand you. They could put out a warning about you. They could even suspend you or ultimately even just kick you out of the profession, prevent you from practicing within that state again, which it turns out we is really kind of self-regulation by the professionals 
along the lines of what they think is best. So it's our society trusting them that they know best and how to best govern themselves. Believe me, it's not an always perfect system. It's run by human beings who make mistakes all the time. But that's the theory behind practical or professional ethics. There's a code of ethics, a book of ethics that applies to the people in that discipline. Now, um, the last part, there's some more that we're going to talk about. There's another whole section that I'll get into tomorrow, um, which has to do with how, if we're going to have a core group of values or beliefs, how they need to be consistent. And I'll talk about that tomorrow. And the last section we'll talk about is the piece he has, again, in chapter one, which has to do with religion and ethics. And that being, a, for many people, a foundation or a base and it's important, and it's in right up front, right in the first chapter for a reason, which is that for a lot of people, when we start pushing into the foundation, what is it that your beliefs about good and bad, right and wrong, what do they rest upon? Are those values? Are they principles? What's the core there? That, for many people, is related to their religious beliefs and their religious traditions. So he puts that right up front. And we got to talk about what that means about the relationship between religion and ethics, what it means about ethics. And so we'll talk some more about that. In the meantime, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit more about the other types of ethics that he gets into and addresses in chapter one of our book, Doing Ethics by Lewis Vaughn. If you don't have the book yet, um, let me know because you got to have it and maybe I can help you. If you got a plan, like, well, I don't have the book yet, but it's on the way, it's coming from eBay someplace or whatever, then that's okay. Just make sure you get it, get it quickly, because you're going to need it. We built in some time here at the beginning of the semester to allow you to get the books. And I know many people order them online, and it could take a long time to get them. So, But you got to have it, and you're going to need it, both as we start to approach our first case study, the Jenny Lake case, but also certainly the further we go into the semester. So... Get the books, read chapter one, and work your way through these concepts and, and his definitions about the different types of ethics. And again, as always, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, also, I want to say that I ran into a couple of y'all today in person out in the real world. Um, and it's always a pleasure to see you uh, on campus, or you're always welcome in my office here in the department. Um, anytime that's convenient for you, let me know. Take care. Talk to y'all again soon. Bye-bye.